Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave your priest, blessed Stanley Rother, the heart of a pastor and the fidelity of a martyr, grant through his intercession that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord my God, you had made me your servant king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, 
not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those He foreknew, He was also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, so that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, He also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has to buy it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into a fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the, house, the head of the household, who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow, we have three really great readings this morning. And let's think about these readings just for a moment. In the first reading, God comes to Solomon in a dream. He's a young man. And he doesn't feel like he has the heart to really, really dispense justice on the people, to be fair. So he asked, when God asked him, what do you want? I'll give you anything. He said, give me the understanding. In other words, a heart so I can rule the vast amount of your people in fairness. And God was very pleased at this time. In the second reading, we find out that God predestines each and every one of us. In other words, He gives us all a gift. And we use that gift for God because He calls us to. And when He calls us to, he justifies us. And when He justifies us, He glorifies us to walk with Him each and every day. And in the Gospel reading, a man finds a treasure, he buries it, sells all that he has so he can buy the land. A man looks for pearls when he finds the great one sells all that he has so he can have it. Then he talks about the fish. Fishermen fishing, and they pull their nets full upon the shore, and they begin to separate the good from the bad. And the bad will be thrown into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. But after he said that, after that he said this, do you understand? And the disciples and the apostles said yes. How many times in Scripture did they actually say yes, we get it? Not very many. But see, they were beginning to understand Jesus and His Father and the loving heart that they both have for all of us. He compares them to the scribes who do nothing but study the Word. But their heart's not open until they know Jesus Christ. And that's like each and every one of us. We may be a good business person, a great mechanic, plumber, 
whatever we have chosen in life. But God has given us a greater gift, our hearts. Our hearts to love Him and to love all people around so that we can glorify God. And He asks us to do that in our business, whatever we do. Most people think that if I love God with all my heart, mind, and soul, I have to give up what I do to make a living. And that's not true. Jesus is telling us today that yes, we can do both as long as we bring Christ into our work world too and everything we do so that people can look up to us and follow us and emulate us because we love Jesus Christ. You know, this coming Tuesday is the feast day of the blessed Stanley Rutherford, who was a priest out of Oklahoma City who gave his life for Christ. But not many people know that Father Stanley, when he first went into the seminary, flunked out because he couldn't get the grasp of Latin. But there was a priest that saw more than that in Father Stanley. A priest that understood there was more to being a priest than being scholarly. And that was using your heart. That precious gift that God gives each and every one of us. And Father Stanley did become ordained. Then he came back to Oklahoma City Diocese. And he got a chance to go to Guatemala as a missionary priest. And he went. And he fell in love with the people. And the people fell in love with him. He was there to teach them a new way of life. A better way of life. He used the gift and talents of being a farmer all of his life growing up to show them how to sustain themselves without starving. Help them build water systems so they had to water for the crops. But most importantly, he taught them to love God with all their heart, mind, and soul. He even learned their language, which was totally different from Spanish, so that he could talk to them and he preached to them in that language. And he was such a powerful force for God that he was put on a hit list. And when it was found out he was on this hit list to be murdered, they called him home. And when they called him home, he was here for a few months. But see, his heart was with the people, his people in Guatemala. A shepherd never abandons his ship, sheep. He loves them and he takes care of them. So Father Stanley went back, knowing he would be martyred knowing that he would be killed, in which he was, for, because he loved his people. He loved God. He loved his Savior. He used his gifts, his heart, to spread the good news. And when they were getting ready to ship his body back to his parents in Oklahoma City, the people there had one request. Let us have his heart. And the family agreed to it. So his heart is still with the people in Guatemala. Because he loved them. He loved the Lord. And he took that gift, that wonderful gift that God gives each and every one of us and used it to glorify God. He used it to make a difference in our world. God's given us all a mighty heart. He's given us that gift, the gift of love, to go forth and make a difference in everyone's lives. 
and not be afraid to stand up and proclaim that God loves us all, that if we all come to God, our world will be a better place. The question is, how are we going to use our heart? Just a quick reminder of that. Unless you are 10 years old or other, you are required to wear a mask. Uh, you are no longer stopping the bed. I believe in one God, the Father of the Lord, maker of heaven, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. For the praise and glory of His name. As we commemorate the martyrdom of blessed Stanley Rother, O Lord, we make our offerings at your altar, praying that we who celebrate the mysteries of our Lord's Passion, may imitate what we now do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are by your wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Anthony Taylor our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, and with all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously render peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. 